Welcome back to The Morning Show, here on Arise News with me, Kasira King. 50 years ago, an unmarried 25-year-old African woman was seen as odd, as a husband and family was supposed to be your life's goal. Mm. Societal shaming of unmarried women is common all over the world, from Africa to the Middle East to Asia and the West, in varying degrees. There are so many terms, most of them are derogatory, which are used to describe an unmarried woman. In China, women who are unmarried at 27 are called leftover women, whereas a man unmarried at 27 is not tagged anything. People will chalk it up to, he hasn't found a woman he loves yet, or the usual, boys will be boys. In countries still neck deep in patriarchy, however, it doesn't matter what the woman has achieved in life, because everything seems to boil down to her marital status. Take, for example, some hotels in Lagos, one of the biggest cities in West Africa that do not allow women into their bars unless they're accompanied by men. All the landlords who don't rent to unmarried women giving the reason for this is curbing prostitution. There is, it seems, a general well-meaning pity that society serves to unmarried women. Even in the church, unmarried women are not allowed to join certain women's organizations. For example, the Catholic Church in Nigeria, whose national body for women, Catholic Women's Organization, does not admit unmarried women into its fold. The value of a woman is still determined by her marital status. So it seems being an unmarried woman in Africa is like being a manicurist with a hand tremor. Very odd and rather tricky. You're expected to marry early and marry well. So today on our take, we'll be discussing the stigma attached to being unmarried in Africa, particularly as it pertains to the entertainment industry. Joining me to discuss, I have no one better than Fumbi Labo and Yvonne. Hello, hello. Mm -hmm. Hello again. Okay, <laughs> so first and foremost, is anyone here married? Uh, no. <laughs> Why did you say it like that? Uh, no. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> Why do you say it like that? As though there is a stigma attached to it. You asked the I'm question like, no. I gave you an answer. No, I'm not married. <laughs> I am single. Loud and you proud. You asked the question I gave you an answer. <laughs> Labo Fumbi? No, I'm not no, married. No. Okay, perfect. So we're all speaking from the unmarried camp here. Yes. Now, why do we think that there is such a stigma attached to being unmarried as a woman? Let's start there, in Africa. To be honest, I'd like to know the answer to that question <laughs> as well, because <laughs> there's nothing wrong with being unmarried at Correct. a certain age, and especially in the entertainment industry. When you find someone that matches your soul, I think you just find the person. Mm -hmm. So maybe they can give us the answer, because I need to all know right. as well. All right, let's, let's hear from the lovely Labo, who always has all the answers. <laughs> for, for me, I, I think it's rooted in um, of culture, maybe language, because I remember once uh, 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 my cousin was talking to my grandma, and we're talking about her, her mother-in-law had said something to her. Right. And my grandma was in, like, in Yoruba land, and the way it's said in Yoruba um, language is, when a man gets married, he's seen as a man. When a woman gets, has a child, she's seen as she's a woman. Wow. Yes, I mean, if, even in, in Yoruba language, um, lovemaking is called um, uh, childbirth play. Right. So it, it's so rooted, it's really yes, it's, yes, it's really, yeah, exactly. So it's really rooted in that, um, you know, married child. And of course, you, you are not supposed to give birth outside wedlock mm -hmm. anyway. So it's pretty much all within um, that context. So it's, it's, it's rooted there. Now, who made these rules? Correct. I don't know. Who started these traditions? We really don't know, but, but it's like, really even the people the that are getting married in their, in their young 20-year ages, do you even really know yourself at that age? Because I, I see so many people getting married at the age of 20, 21, 22, 23, and I'm older than that. I won't tell you exactly how old. <laughs> and I think to myself, you know, I'm still learning about myself every day. How can I effectively give myself to somebody else when I'm only just learning about myself? So are we pushing these women into getting married before they're ready? When you say ready, uh, uh, maybe somebody else should talk so I don't... <laughs> because when you say ready, my grandmother got married at 21, mm -hmm. right? And th the thing is, we could, we could throw our heads around and say all of these things, but the reality is they grew together. Because sometimes this whole... Again, I'm not married, so it's not like I'm looking down at anyone who's single <laughs> or anything, but sometimes... It helps when you all grow together. Mm -hmm. So, like, you're not so stuck. Oh, Yvonne looks like no, she wants to which, which is good. <laughs> but sometimes, because the reality is, and if someone is single, as, the older you get, the more stuck in your ways you become. Yeah. And it, it does have its issues as well. So nobody's forcing anyone to get married. But at the same time, marriage is great. Mm -hmm. Marrying early if you... 
find the one, fine. Yeah. Later, fine. But you mentioned your grandmother, and I've, I'm of the opinion that because, you know, we spoke about globalization yesterday, we are, we've become such a globalized society as a whole that women are realizing, African women are realizing that, you know, perhaps there's, they're not able to take as much as their grandparents were able to, or their grandmothers or great grandmothers were able to take back in the day. Perhaps because your eye don't open, as you would say in pigeon, you know, you realize that, okay, maybe the grass might be green on the other side because we live in such a transient mm -hmm. instant society i can contact someone in america i don't i don't even i don't have to marry from me i can speak to someone mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean so is that does that factor into the issues that we're facing for let's hear from yeah, you yeah i believe so i think um times have changed like because everything is different now you know um people see i mean if even when it comes to even divorce and all that is is not as obscene as it used to be. Yes. You know, so like, I feel like, um, so now it's like people are wanting to be more independent mm. and they want to achieve something, you know, and marriage is no more like a the achievement. Yeah, God. you know, yeah. so like, yeah. No, but the, no, but the thing then is um, marriage is not for independence. It's for codependency, mm -hmm. right? But that's so what you're saying. Yeah, so yeah, it's being yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. So, so it's that whole, um, you know, I'm not going to take this anymore. It's still mm -hmm. that whole micro, microwave generation. Now, maybe people are going through bad things in their marriages. I don't know. But my grandmother was a serial entrepreneur. Mm. And she, she had like seven different businesses. The marriage didn't hold her back. It didn't hold her back in anything. Like, right. so again, maybe different cultures, different families. But my family, it didn't, it didn't hold. In fact, she, she thrived. Like, mm. she really, and she had six. I don't know how that woman did it, to be honest. <laughs> but, she, but, but she did it, and she did it well. Yeah. So that whole, but, but she also realized it was still that codependency. Mm -hmm. Because that whole, why are you asking me why I came at, back late? Mm -hmm. I have to ask you why you came mm -hmm. back late. Because when married, you owe me a responsibility. Right. Whether you're a man or a woman's but that whole no I'm an adult no you're not we're together right so we have to so it's still that yes fine things have changed which is great but even this change we need to also be careful mm -hmm. we need to be really careful how with this African change. is it uh, exactly okay. I'm a, oh, all right, all right. Okay. Vixen. Okay, you've had your time <laughs> <laughs> my grandmother had a fantastic marriage she was also an entrepreneur we came from money and I'll tell you this with all the money and the businesses and friends and all that she had a fantastic marriage, but in her 70s, trouble came, you know? And my grandfather, I shouldn't be saying this, sort of like cheated on her. Okay. So what do you think that tells me? What do you think that shows me? You know, I feel that it's important as individuals to find yourselves, to be aware of yourselves before, like you said, it's codependency, it's a partnership. It's two different personalities coming together to make something work. Mm. So the sooner and the better you, the sooner you find yourself, the better chances of, you know, being in a strong marriage. Yeah. Maybe they, my, my grandparents got married at too early an age and they didn't understand what was going on yeah. with each other. And then along the line in their seventies, my grandfather cheated. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's horrible. Uh, marriage is fantastic, but divorce is not the best as well. So it's be, not. You, and what we're seeing, we're seeing, I think this is the point that Fumbi was making, is we're seeing a prevalence of increased divorce races, mm -hmm. across, uh, races, rates rather, across Africa. And it's not something that, you know, Africa's kind of, the society is kind of like the Catholic society in that we think, you know, just stay together for the sake of your kids, for the sake of the union, stay together no matter what. And we're seeing a lot more African women say, nah, exactly. I'm done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm out. I think what happened with several people was, and I was still having this conversation with an older friend, is they saw what their mothers went through, probably grandparents, mm. and they realised that it never ends. I think, so you know that whole, just kidding, no, they realised, wait, hang on, grandma, you're like 80, Grandpa is still treating you like this, you know, this, uh, this is not going yeah. to be me. So I think there was also, there's probably that as well, where no, just keep that in, like, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Way, yes, you know? yes, so yes. The way you're treated, the way you allow people to treat you is how you will be treated. Absolutely. You know, he can raise his hand and hit you and he says, oh, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. Yeah, you end up getting married to him. One day you find out you're dead. Ooh, okay, <laughs> that is rude. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just keeping breakfast real. TV. Okay. So let's take sorry a look about that. at, so our sister publication this day recently brought out uh, two covers that we're going to look at. The first one was brought out just about a fortnight ago, and it featured the most eligible bachelors in Nigeria. For me, I don't know what you weren't doing on the cover, but he just told us he's not a bachelor. So we're taking a look at the female cover first, and this features 20 sizzling singles. They're all making waves in their 30s. 
And I saw a lot of these uh, females put these the cover on their Instagram pages and talk about it in their captions and talk about why people were so, you know, worried about their marital status. Why is it such a big deal to you, you know? And really just embracing and enjoying the fact that for once someone was celebrating them in their singledom. Why do we make such a big deal out of being single, though? Why is it, why is it seen as such a thing for you to be single in your 30s? I personally think that you shouldn't be married until you're in your 30s. No, really? I, I think, I think <laughs> well, I mean, we usually call getting married settling down, mm -hmm. right? So there's always, I want her to settle down. She's not settled down. And even from the parents' perspective, it's like a family unit gives you this sense of, um, I don't. I don't want to use the words responsibility because I know people. Get a dog. Who, if yeah, you want responsibility. No, no, I, I don't know people. I, mean... I know people who are single and more responsible than people who are exactly. actually married. So responsibility is not the. But it, I think. Um, because, I mean, you have a husband, you have children. It gives you this level of, um, what should I... I don't know what, what that's called. It's a safety bucket, which necessarily it is not. But essentially, they did it. So, I mean, what you, you can't give what you don't have. Mm -hmm. So, they did it. Passing on the baton, you should do it too. Right. I don't think it should be an age thing. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's basically how you personally feel. And, you know, what works for you, to be honest. That's what I think. Yeah. You know, so if it works for you that you're 35 and that's when you want to... Right. I mean, yeah, but it's yeah. a generation of it works for you, if it works for you. I mean, I think <laughs> to, to a very large extent, we're too... It, 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 life shouldn't always be that what, what you want. Sometimes, what do you mean? No, wait, hang on. Wait, wait, no, 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 wait, wait, hang on. And I, I oh, my goodness, we're all ready to... <laughs> down really down the you. But what I'm saying is, yes, fine, but sometimes it's almost like, sometimes I know people... Nobody should put pressure on you, but I know people who were just pushed a little and they're thankful that they were pushed a little mm. and they actually got to get married. So right. it, it could go either way, but this whole when you're ready, you do it when you want to... Sometimes it's not so much as to whatever you... Because with this generation, it's like, I don't want it. I'm out. I don't want it. No. <laughs> it, it shouldn't always be like that. Dragon's Den, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, go, go on, Yvonne. No, I just feel when you're ready, you're ready. Whether you're 40, 18, 25, if you are there in your head, that's fine. And like, if your partner is... Is there as well? Just do it. Like, as long as your eggs are frozen. Okay, so I know that I know this is a very touchy subject for us women, but we do <laughs> have to let the one gentleman amongst us speak. So yeah, I don't me, think it's I something goes. that you know people. Should, you should allow somebody push you yeah. into. Like you be one person for the rest of your life, committed to, you to that guided. person. Uh, wait, what's the interesting? Person for your life, yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah, don't I mean, like, so it, is it is it is a big decision? Yes, it like, is. Like you don't, you can't just go into it anyhow and mm -hmm. you know you can't have somebody outside try to you know enforce that on you you know you men i think i think i are in the lucky end of this <laughs> thing because women can't say oh no oh be with one person no we want to be with that one person because we're more emotional mm. once we invest ourselves emotionally we're with you till the end mm. but because maybe you men have more options maybe i mean there are guys that want to be with one person. <laughs> okay, but <laughs> you see, we yeah, yeah, but there's still people who have <laughs> options too. So okay, so let's take know. a look at the this day cover that was brought out the week before the female cover, and that featured top ten most eligible bachelors in Lagos. Now, the one problem that I have with these uh, now, okay, so look at this. Can you see that it says the top ten eligible bachelors under thirty, uh, forty rather, right. whereas the female was those Not sizzling more. over thirty. It's almost like you're trying to show that oh, we're not broken. There's nothing wrong with us. Whereas here you're unmarried. saying it's acceptable for them to be almost halfway through their lives mm -hmm. and be unmarried. Do you see the difference in the way that it's been presented? Mm -hmm. I want to understand why. Why do we feel that we need to make excuses for these beautiful women who are so successful and who are just above 30? Do you think that age matters um, when it comes to um, maybe the guy being older or the lady being in, in a marriage I don't think I, it matters I, depending on the person right. I think it's very very specific you know you could have a 27 year old guy who is more mature than a 42 year old man <coughs> you know oh. <laughs> <laughs> somebody differ <laughs> all right then differ yes I do differ go on then make I a want point to be with a man who is way more experienced than I am who's older than I am who's seen life and who can teach me and who can be you know, my mentor, my brother, my father, my husband, you know, and that's it. I don't want to be with someone I want to babysit. I would cater on that, actually, because I realized I've seen 18-year-old men, men, 
and 45 year old boys. boys. Exactly. Well, no, I've not seen, personal dating, like, but mentally. Exactly. I, I've actually They're seen. All yes, us. I've actually seen. I, I, I don't even have seen. I see. Yes. On a daily basis. That's just my opinion. I want to. I be think that has, that. you know, something to do with the reason why that is that way. Right. You know, because um, they see that men are supposed to be older than the mm. their spouse. You know, so it's, it's kind of like I feel like that's where all of that. And then Generated just taking from. this back to the entertainment industry, Fumbi, have you experienced, we'll go to both of you, have you experienced any sort of stigmas attached to either your age mm -hmm. or a female colleague of yours that either was turned down for something because she was too old and an excuse was given or she wasn't old enough? Well, um, okay, for example, um, I know some people that are trying to get um, certain I don't want to use any names, but like they're trying to get like certain people to be their ambassadors and all right. things like that, you know. So um, there are a bunch of people that they list out, and you know, and they're like, oh yeah, this person too old, this person too, you know. <laughs> you get so definitely it 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 plays a part in yeah. in all of that. Is it gender specific? Gender specific. When they say this person is too old, is it always with the females? Well. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah, it was kind of, yeah. Oh, that hurts my heart. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yvonne, have you ever experienced that you're aware of any sort of victimization, if you will, dependent on your age? Um, yes, I think I have experienced it a few times. They feel okay. Um, we want this person for... We, we have a category of jobs that we want to give out to certain people. Mm. So, therefore she might be slightly above the age range we're looking for. So, um, nah, let's go for the 20-somethings and the 18s. And, you know, it happens, but what My can we do? Is broken. <laughs> for anybody listening out there that wants to give Yvonne from B Lab or Iron Endorsements, we are the age you think we are. Hello. That, unfortunately, <laughs> brings us to the end of the morning show today. Thanks once again to my extraordinarily talented guests, Fumbi and Yvonne Aquero, for joining me, Katura King. And, of course, thanks to you at home for watching. From my entire team and I here in Lagos, all that's left for me to say is enjoy the rest of your morning, enjoy the rest of your day, and enjoy Fumbi's hallelujah. Goodbye. Sun's outside and my night has turned to day. I see plenty now. I used to be lost and God showed me the way. I yeah. see plenty now. All I see is blessings every time I look back. I see plenty now. I see plenty now. Oh, hallelujah, meje baba mojuba. Guru guru meje leshe. Yaya mepa. Hallelujah. Guru guru meje leshe. Yaya mepa. Hallelujah.